Hi everybody, hope you're well. Today we'll read from a book titled Documents on Raphael by Stefano Graziani, edited by Francesco Zanotto and published by Centro Internazionale di Studi di Architettura Andrea Palladio in collaboration with Moose. Alice Woodman wrote, Among the holdings of London's Victoria and Albert Museum is a set of plate glass negatives, each of which is an epically dimensioned one square meter and six millimeter thick. They were produced in 1858 by the institution's first in-house photographer, Charles Thurston Thompson, and recorded the cycle of seven Raphael cartoons that were then housed at Hampton Court Palace on the capital's western outskirts. On average, each cartoon is 5 meters long and 3.5 meters high, which made it impossible to photograph them in the gallery where they had been installed. On days of fine weather, they were therefore lowered out of a window and into an adjacent courtyard, allowing Thompson to photograph them in daylight with the aid of a camera of unknown but presumably monumental size. From the negatives, album and prints were made, which conservators annotated to provide an exacting record of the cartoon's physical conditions. The exercise represented one of the earliest and most ambitious uses of photography to document a work of art. As Walter Benjamin famously argued in his 1935 essay The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction, the advent of photography dramatically diminished the sense of authority and aura that a work of art had historically projected. And yet, the fact that the cartoons were among the first images to undergo such a jeopardizing multiplication is not without irony. These were, after all, never conceived as definitive works of art in their own right, but as design documents that would enable the production of tapestries by other hands. Employing many sheets of paper glued together on a canvas backing, Raphael and his studio produced the cartoons which depict scenes from the Gospels and the Acts of the Apostles between 1515 and 1516. They were then sent to Brussels, where the studio of Peter van Alst spent three years weaving, enabling the tapestry's first presentation in the Sistine Chapel on St. Stephen 1519. In fact, these were only the first of a series of versions produced from the cartoons. Both King Henry VIII of England and Francis I of France acquired sets. Meanwhile, as early as 1516, the cartoons had also been employed as the basis for the production of prints and proved particularly well suited to reinterpretation in this medium as Raphael, knowing that his designs would have to work effectively as tapestries, had concentrated on bold compositional effects rather than intricate detail. It was primarily through the proliferation of prints that Raphael's designs established a central place in the European cultural imagination. But by the time Charles Thurston Thompson came to make his photographic representations of the cartoons, the smoothly idealized and eminently reproducible nature of Raphael's images had begun to attract significant criticism. When John Ruskin first visited Rome in 1840, he recorded of Raphael, however, I found I could make nothing whatever. The only thing clearly manifest to me in his compositions was that everybody seemed to be pointing at everybody else, and that nobody, to my notion, was worth pointing at. The frescoes of 1509-1511 in the Stanze della Segnatura in the Vatican proved a source of particular vexation for the English critic. And from that spot and from that hour, Ruskin wrote, the intellect and the art of Italy date their degradation, and it was brought about in great part by the very excellencies of the man who had thus marked the commencement of the decline. The perfection of execution and the beauty of feature which were attained in these works and in those of his contemporaries rendered finish of execution and beauty of form the chief objects of all artists and henceforward execution was looked for rather than thought, and beauty rather than veracity.
Ruskin's belief that Raphael's achievements represented an ossification of the more vital tendencies of medieval art ran counter to the view of Britain's Royal Academy of Arts, which was strongly promoting the Italian master as a model for a resurgence of contemporary history painting. The cartoons which were on public display at Hampton Court formed a central plank of that campaign. But Ruskin's criticism of Raphael resonated strongly with a younger generation of British artists. In 1848, a group which included William Holman Hunt, John Everett Millet and Dante Gabriel Rossetti established a pre-Raphaelite brotherhood with the express purpose of reconnecting contemporary art to a tradition that they believed Raphael had corrupted. The close observation of nature and its representation in abundant detail became a central principle of the Brotherhood's war against academism. In 1865, Thompson made a further set of photographs that can be found in the Victoria and Albert's collection, this time recording a six-meter-high horse-drawn packing case into which the cartoons were soon to be installed. Queen Victoria had recently agreed to place the cartoons on long-term loan to the new museum which had been named in her and her husband's honor, and the bespoke case had been commissioned with the purpose of transporting them from Hampton Court. It was the elaborate technical infrastructure required to ensure the preservation of these most fragile objects that held the photographer's attention. Paradoxically, the decision not to present the cartoons explicitly communicates a greater sense of their physical presence. Thompson's oblique portraits reawaken the aura that their long history of reproduction has done so much to dim. The book accompanies an exhibition at the Palladio Museum in Vicenza, Ascrit at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.